Hi and welcome everyone back to another episode of Across the Ocean. My name is Matthias from Zurich. And I'm James in Miami. Thank you everyone for tuning in again to this special episode of Across the Ocean. Before we get into today's topic, we have, we must do a celebratory dance with all of you. One, two, three. Awesome. We are celebrating the 20th episode of Across the Ocean. James, would you have ever thought that we'd come this far with this format that we've created? Yes, yes, I would have thought of it because it's just so much fun. Uh, and I think <laughs> if nobody watched any of these videos, we'd still do it because we just love like hanging out and we have like, I, I look forward to our True. recording sessions. So yeah. uh, yes, I do think that, you know, this is gonna be something that carries on for a long time and I'm very happy. Uh, but what I can't believe is that it's been 20 episodes, 20 months, you know, a year and a bit, yeah. uh, or over a year and a half that we've we've been recording these sessions. So uh, yeah. I couldn't be happier. And uh, yeah, we've reached the big 2-0. So that is definitely worth celebrating. Absolutely. Thanks, guys, for dancing with us, dancing with the stars. Well, okay, let's move on to today's topic. We're talking about, um, about what features a camera-friendly dive resort needs to have, in our opinion, to make it camera-friendly. And we're going to be focusing primarily on dive resorts that offer um, shore diving. So we're not going to be looking at the boat portion of the diving. That's just going to be too much to cramp all into one video. So we'll focus on um, resorts that offer boat diving and what is more specific to that application in the next episode. But today we're looking at stuff that is important in dive resorts that offer shore diving. So for example, a camera room. Wouldn't you agree, James, is one of the key features that a dive resort needs to have to qualify as a camera-friendly dive resort. Yeah, definitely. So if a, if a resort has taken the time and money and effort to build out a specific camera room and they market it as such and they put it in their, on their website and show you photos of the facility before you arrive there, that is a big signifier that they are dedicated to supporting underwater photography and videography. So there are a number of things I look for specifically within a camera room, which will tell me the sort of level of success that a resort has, you know, sort of achieved a successful uh, camera friendly status. So, you know, things like workstations, right? Some camera rooms, they'll be like, oh yeah, we've got a camera room, cool. Well, it used to be a storage room for dive gear and they put some fold-out tables in there and they call that the camera room. That's not really a camera room, that's just some fold-out tables in the room. What I like is like specific workbenches that have been built for cameras with partitioned sections so that when you're breaking down and building your rig, you've got like a little cubicle little cubby hole so you know yeah. when you strip off o-rings and you strip off this that and the other and buttons and you're cleaning and whatever else it could be everything in that little space belongs to your rig and it's got not getting mixed in with the camera guy working next to you and all their stuff so so things like that that there's like dedicated workspaces i particularly love um one of the features that you know building my dive locker here I was very cognizant of was that I have a ton of stuff to charge. So just on my camera rig itself, I have batteries for the camera, I have batteries for the monitor, and I have at least two main video lights. And then I've probably got a GoPro on top of that and maybe you know a bunch of other lights, my dive light and so on. So I have at least six things that need to charge. So I need power, I need power outlets, I need the power to be reliable so that my quick charge functionality works and I can switch my batteries out really fast. Um, but like I put a whole bank of power in here and they're pretty much full all the time with different stuff getting charged, um, you know, between myself and my students. So in a good camera room, you don't want one extension cord with eight outlets for 20 
camera divers. That's not, yeah. you know, conducive. So that's definitely something that I look for is, is plentiful power and a good reliable supply. Um, and then lastly, and this is a really nice feature that I've seen in some of the sort of more top end camera rooms, is that they will actually have one or even multiple dedicated air guns to help you displace water and dry off your rig. And they're kind of set up like a barber shop where they have a supply of compressed air coming in with a very simple handheld gun, kind of like they would use to, you know, blow off your hair when you get a haircut. Um, but that is available to the workstations on some kind of sort of, you know, elasticated or, or uh, coiled up cord and that you can dry off all the air guns. I personally travel with something like this, which is like a little, USB chargeable fan, but if I don't need to take this because there's an air gun already in the camera room, well, that saves me, I don't know, about a half a kilo of luggage. So those are okay. sort of some of the key features I look for in a really sort of camera friendly resort. Matthias, what about you? Um, well, one of the main things, most important things for me, I would say is uh, light, having enough light in such a camera room so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And this specifically applies if you're diving in the tropics where um, you normally, pretty much throughout the year, you lose your natural sunlight at around sort of six o'clock in the afternoon or early evening. And oftentimes you do uh, have a late afternoon dive or even a night dive and then you have to take apart your gear when it's dark outside so you need to have proper lighting inside and not just you know one light bulb in the middle of the room but proper lighting all around uh, the room so that you can actually really see what you're doing with your equipment um, another important point for me is that they have enough um, workspace stations. You mentioned those stations before um, and I fully agree they need to be big, they need to be comfortable, they need to be separated but they also need to be plenty in terms of numbers. So if a dive resort um, has availability for let's say 20 divers well then they should technically really also supply 20 separate cubicles inside their camera room so that everyone who has a camera, potentially every diver nowadays, has their own private little um, space where they can leave the camera and leave all their stuff charging overnight or in between dives and you don't have to move it all around. And lastly, the third one for me is having disposable stuff like um, towels, tissues, um, also having tools available to um, set up your equipment and break it down if you do forget something at home. If an O-ring breaks, maybe a good idea is also for the dive resort to have sort of the most commonly used O-rings in sort of the, the, the very popular dive housings to have them available there. Um, and they don't have to be for free. They can also uh, they can also charge something for it, but just have that available on location so that if you do burst an O-ring or you break something, that you're able to fix it on location and you can still use the camera for the rest of your vacation. That's, uh, I think that's, well, it's not something very essential, but it is that tiny little bit that makes a resort really camera friendly in my opinion and just above service wise above the other resorts out there so those are my three things there um along the same lines i also want to touch point quickly here with you james about a topic that we quickly discussed before we started rolling the camera which is your desktop stations that some dive resorts still have in their camera rooms and i know that the opinions are very controversial on whether or not these desktop um, stations are useful at all. I personally think they can be useful if you in between two dives just quickly want to check your SD card and just want to, you know, have a quick look maybe on a larger screen than just a screen on your camera, whether or not the images that you've taken or the videos that you've taken on the first dive whether or not they've turned out any good you can do that on that desktop station quickly and don't have to run up to your room and uh, look at them on your uh, on your uh, laptop um how do you stand to that yeah i i, I mean it's cute and, and I, I know what you're get, getting at but i kind of feel like it, it's usually an afterthought for resorts they're usually taking a you know, a, a desktop PC from 1998 that's still running Windows 95 and they leave it in there and, you know, we're coming in with, you know, super fast 
SD cards and, and the loading is, is terrible. And I, I just feel that most camera operators that I know that spend 20 grand on a camera rig probably have a faster laptop sitting in their room. So I think, you know, for that, for that quick check, I think usually you can just sprint up to the room with the SD card. If you need to check footage, check it on your laptop or bring the laptop to the camera room because you're probably going to charge it there anyway. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't generally get a lot of use out of those unless they've, you know, really sort of put a nice new MacBook in there or something. And then, you know, you're at a really top class resort for sure. I get you point, point taken. Can I add something else in? I just thought it was another good point. Sure. Sure. Something we didn't talk about before we rolled the camera, but that is super, super important for a camera friendly resort. And it has nothing to do with the camera room per se, is security. Security is massively important. If the yeah. resort is just a free for all of people coming and going, and the camera room is not locked and anyone has access to it, and you can just wander in whenever you want. If you're leaving yeah. your rig down there overnight, you know, somebody could come in and clean house. I have heard horror stories of people having stuff snatched from resorts, from camera rooms. So security, particularly if you're in a less developed part of the world, is incredibly important um, yeah. for, for that reason, because we make big investment in our gear and we want to make sure it's secure when we're out on destination. So just wanted to Absolutely. touch base on that point is, is definitely something yeah, to, uh, to think very about. Very good and very valid point. Thanks for, for bringing that up. And to kind of close off this uh, um, episode, I have one last thing that I want to quickly talk about, which is rinse tanks. Yes. Um, how do you, what's your point on, or your view on rinse tanks and how should they be um, laid out and uh, what's the ideal rinse tank for you? Uh, well, the ideal situation is obviously having a dedicated rinse station for camera gear separate from mm -hmm. dive gear. Um, dive gear is very absorbent. It gen generally tends to track a lot of salt into the rinse tanks. Um, and, you know, if it's left in the sun, you get evaporation and the rinse tank ends up being as salty as the ocean. So you definitely want a separate rinse tank for your gear. Um, you want to make sure it's large enough for the big camera rigs. Um, I'm very lucky that I've got a 100 gallon uh, rinse tank dedicated uh, here at my house. But uh, at least, you know, a large enough that you've got a big housing and your lights and you can dunk the whole thing in at one go. And then my personal preference is to actually have some form of running water as well. I want to make sure that rather than sitting my camera rig in a bucket of water that, you know, a bunch of other camera rigs have already been dunked into, that I can actually displace any salty water with fresh yep. running water. So just a hose, you know, regular hose head on it. Um, just to get any of the salt off and make sure it's running away and dispersing for me is very important. How about yourself? Yeah, good point. Um, I can I can fully agree to all the points that you've mentioned. Um, one thing that I would like to add is, and that drives me nuts when I get to a dive resort and I want to put my camera into the dedicated camera rinse tank and there is about an inch of water in that rinse tank. And I go like, well, not even my tripod will get a proper rinse if I put my camera in there. <laughs> So if you have a dedicated camera rinse tank, dear dive resort operators, please do fill it up. Please make sure it's properly filled so I can put my camera in there and it's submerged in water and not just, you know, the tiny little bit on the bottom gets a, a proper rinse. So that's, that's my main concern with rinse tanks that oftentimes they don't get properly filled. So coincidentally that we're talking about camera rooms in this episode, Matthias, but if you watched last month's episode, you know that Matthias and I are co-hosting a trip to the Philippines and we're actually going to be using Atlantis Dive Resorts in Puerto Galera, which has a pretty fantastic and well-equipped camera room. So if you're excited to come and dive with Matthias and myself in the Coral Triangle in a perfect scuba diving destination and you want to bring your camera kit, you'll see some of the features that we're talking about in this video in their camera room. And uh, I think we still got a few spaces available. If you're interested, yeah, we will link many. the trip brochure in the description of this video below. So check that out. Definitely. Yeah, feel free to go and check it out. And if you're lucky, we might have one or the other spot still available for you. And we'd be more than happy to take you guys with us on this uh, epic adventure that is waiting for us in 2023. 
So having that said, I think this is a perfect point to end our video for today. As always, thank you so much, guys, for your time and for being with us. Um, it, uh, as we said at the beginning, creates enormous enjoyment for us to be doing these videos for you and uh, even more enjoyment seeing you guys watching these videos. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to any of our channels or even just to one, make sure that you subscribe to both. There will be a link down in the video description below. And until next time, when we talk about dive boats that are camera friendly, we wish you a great time and we'll see you next month. Bye-bye.